At Lloyd's, we're shaping the future of insurance. A future that works better for all of us. We're ready to use technology in innovative ways. Ready to embrace new methods of working. Ready to look at data through a new lens. Blueprint One set out the frameworks to modernize the market. Now we're ready to put that plan into action. We're ready for Blueprint Two. Ready for next generation digital platforms. Ready for automation to speed settlements. Ready for intuitive risk exchange. We're ready for an even braver Lloyd's. One that runs smoother, faster, and even more efficiently. We're getting ready for a digital future. Are you? Welcome to everybody, and thank you for joining us today as we launch the Future at Lloyd's Blueprint 2. This morning, you'll hear from Jen Rigby, Lloyd's Chief Operations Officer and sponsor of Future at Lloyd's. Jen will take us through some of the detailed plans set out in Blueprint 2. Following that, we'll also hear from a few of those who've been involved in the creation of the solutions that we're presenting today, including PPL's CEO, uh, Sue Jakobek, uh, Brit's Group Head of Claims, Sheil Sorne, and Tizer CEO, Fly Boosnell. Lloyd CEO John Neal will close this session explaining how you can get involved as we execute these plans. Uh, contrary to the introduction, we won't actually be doing a Q&A session today uh, because we'd like to give you all a chance uh, to read the materials that we're publishing in Blueprint 2 and then to give your feedback uh, and questions via the various channels available. You can find Blu Blueprint 2 at futureat.lloyds.com and you'll be pleased to know it isn't quite as long as Blueprint 1. A year ago, and in very different circumstances, we published our vision for the future at Lloyd's through Blueprint 1. While no one could have predicted that a year on, Lloyd's would be thrust into remote working and digital trading overnight, with little or no time to prepare, the market has responded very well, proving its resilience in the face of adversity, as it has done many times in its history. And although the pandemic has created significant challenges for our market, it's also demonstrated that we can adapt and do things differently. With the continuing lockdown measures underscoring the importance of the ambition we set out in September last year. In Blueprint 1, we shared our aim to create a larger, more efficient and more profitable market by offering better solutions to our customers' risk management needs, making it easier and cheaper to do business in the market and attracting a broader range of capital. And at that time, we said that Lloyd's had a, had a once in a generation opportunity to lead the market in providing innovative customer services and solutions. We said that we must seize, seize it by leveraging on the spirit of partnership in the Lloyd's market and the value that is placed on the trusted relationships between our customers, brokers, and underwriters. Everything that has happened in the last year has only accelerated the need for us to transform our marketplace. And you've all responded to that call to arms, giving us your support and working with us as we set out to drive the most fundamental digital transformation this market has seen, working together. We've achieved much in 2020, despite the challenges the pandemic has presented. And today we're taking the next big step in the future at Lloyd's encapsulated in this Blueprint 2, a challenging two-year program that takes us from ambition to reality with tangible solutions that will radically shift the market to a digital ecosystem powered by data and technology, ultimately delivering better value at a lower cost to you and for your customers. Jen will go into the details of our execution plans uh, shortly, but in brief, we will deliver an intuitive, straight-through process for placing and binding risk, enabling growth through global reach and easier access to new products and services. We will deliver the ability to identify a valid claim on notification, enabling claims to be tracked through their life cycle, resulting in a much faster settlement time and improved customer experience. We will deliver 
a right first time mindset. Radically reducing lead times and errors, driving cost benefits for everyone in the value chain. We will deliver a first class digital marketplace, data driven and digitally enabled, with fast processing capabilities allowing cover to be issued in minutes. And we will deliver this in a number of ways. We will transform placement, focusing first on open market and delegated authority business through the rest of this year and into next. These two placement routes make up 80% of both the gross written premium and insurance contracts placed at Lloyd's. Placement will be via a third party solution, including PPL, with Lloyd's approved data standards ensuring a seamless placement to bind process, supporting the next generation of placement platforms and solutions at Lloyd's. We will build and launch Lloyd's new digital gateway, which will allow placement and claims processing to occur in minutes as opposed to weeks. And we will be re-engineering the claims lifecycle at Lloyd's from the first notification of loss through to settlement, delivering greater transparency throughout the process and faster payments to our customers. The program described in Blueprint 2 is set to be executed iteratively over the next two years uh, to the end of 2022. It's an ambitious, purposeful program that will combine the best of digital with the best of our physical marketplace and represents an exciting new chapter at Lloyd's. As we all know very well, change is tough, but the goals we've set out uh, to fundamentally transform and digitize our market will set Lloyd's up for a strong and sustainable future. A future that will ensure that we can continue to deliver on our purpose of sharing risk to create a braver world. The second blueprint represents a huge collaboration between the corporation of Lloyd's, underwriters and insurers, brokers, market associations, customers, suppliers, and many others. Your responses have been overwhelmingly positive and have enabled us to develop the solutions for the future at Lloyd's. So thank you to everybody who's contributed and helped so far. And thank you to everyone who will be involved in bringing these solutions to life. I know we have the appetite and the energy to execute our plans for the future. And in doing so, we have the makings of real transformational change. Blueprint 2 is our roadmap to get there, but it's going to take all of us to succeed. So thank you for your continued support. I'd now like to invite Jen Rigby to take us through some of the detail we've published in Blueprint 2 today. Jen. Thank you, Bruce. Since we launched Blueprint 1 just over a year ago, despite the many challenges that have resulted from the global pandemic, we can all be proud of how we've continued to progress our ambition to build the most advanced insurance marketplace in the world. As we look to the exciting future that we're creating together through a robust and detailed delivery plan that will bring our ambitious vision of a truly digital, data-led, customer-centered Lloyd's Market to life. It's also worth reflecting for a little while on just how far we've come to get to where we are now. When we set out on this journey, we did so with four key objectives, which remain as important today as they were a year ago. The first is to offer even better solutions for our customers. And we've already made a great start with your help on that. We've approved four new syndicates in a box, including the Carbon Syndicate, Munich Re-Innovation Syndicate, and Asta Picnic Syndicate. The fourth syndicate in a box is Ascot Parcel Syndicate, the very first public-private syndicate in Lloyd's 330-year history, which has been set up to ensure the storage and transportation of a COVID-19 vaccine once it's developed to emerging economies showing the relevance and the immediate value of what we set out in Blueprint 1. We've also approved a new syndicate and a very new type of syndicate, Key, which is a fully digital, algorithmically driven, follow-only syndicate created in collaboration with Brit and Google Cloud. And we've launched a pilot for the automatic settlement of small claims to reduce administration 
and most importantly, speed up claims payments for customers. The second objective we've committed to is to simplify the process of accessing products and services at Lloyd's for our customers and capital providers. Towards that goal, we've built submission and quote APIs that allow data to flow between carriers and brokers. We've streamlined the claims process, taking an average of three days off transaction times. And we've agreed and finalized Lloyd's stake in the London market's electronic placing platform, PPL. The third objective we set out was to reduce the cost of doing business at Lloyd's. So over the past 12 months, we've reduced bureaucracy for claims processing for binding authorities. We've also reduced the need for rekeying data through those APIs. And we've worked extensively with the Lloyd's Market Association and managing agents on potential lead follow standards. Finally, we committed to building an inclusive and innovative culture that attracts world-class talent to Lloyd's. This is imperative as we shift to new ways of working and together build a high-performing and diverse culture. To that end, we've established Lloyd's Culture Advisory Group, which has been set up to ensure that Lloyd's is taking the right actions to affect sustainable and measurable change. And we've launched a new culture dashboard to benchmark our starting point and track our collective progress as we deliver on our commitments. Those include improving gender balance across senior leadership by setting market-wide targets, as well as committing to set the same for ethnicity in 2021. It's hugely important to me that our solutions are user-centric and created in collaboration with the market. The over 3,000 pieces of research that we've conducted with hundreds of end users in the market have informed and will continue to inform the solutions in Blueprint 2 as we deliver them over the next two years. So we've continued to work with the market to develop the virtual room, which is a great example of that. That's our digital tool designed to help market users connect and collaborate online and alleviate the challenges that you told us through our research you're experiencing when working remotely. The virtual room provides the opportunity for users to conduct and initiate real-time conversations with key business contacts via an instant chat option. And it also enables users to search for contacts or book a time slot in members' diaries, or even to connect with new brokers and underwriters. As we continue to increase the availability and the functionality of the virtual room, those developments will prioritize user feedback and new releases will be regular and seamless in the way that you'd expect from modern digital tools. All of those achievements together are also greater than the sum of their parts because they demonstrate our intent and our ability to make change happen and to do so at pace. And while we've continued to press forward, we've also continued to evolve our thinking and our approach because the world certainly hasn't been standing still since we published our initial vision a year ago. Whilst we're proud of how far we've come, we know that there's much more hard work ahead of us to achieve our future at Lloyd's ambition. And so today, we've laid out our execution plan in detail in Blueprint 2, a compelling and comprehensive program that will profoundly transform the way in which customers get covered all the way through to recovering from loss. We'll achieve this by the redesign of the entire insurance lifecycle process from placement through accounting, payment, endorsements, claims, renewals, and reporting, offering a seamless digital service for all Lloyd's customers and stakeholders globally. Through the plans we've set out, we'll establish new ways of doing business underpinned by digital channels that enable advanced data collection and management, unlocking significant benefits for policyholders brokers, cover holders, and insurers. We'll create solutions that will enable those market participants to operate at a materially lower cost, which we estimate to be about 800 million. Blueprint 2 will be executed within its two-year time frame, during which time we'll also undertake more work to quantify and to illustrate other ways in which we can streamline our activities and drive out unnecessary cost. By doing this, we can enable you to innovate in the way that you serve your customers and operate more efficiently at a lower cost base. So how will we do this? As I mentioned earlier, we've been looking at the entire 
insurance life cycle at Lloyd's, from getting covered to recovering from loss. Understanding and finding ways to dramatically improve that customer journey has been imperative to our thinking and our plans. So I'd like to now take you through a high-level overview of the changes we've set out today in Blueprint 2, starting with the beginning of the insurance buying life cycle with placement. Blueprint 2 describes how Lloyds will transform placement with particular focus on open market direct and facultative reinsurance and also delegated authority, which together represent the vast majority of business by transaction and value. Starting with open market placement, which is undertaken through a number of third-party platforms, rather than delivering our own placement platform, we'll be providing risk placement standards in consultation with the market, enabling transactions to be processed faster through new digital processing at a lower cost. To gain Lloyd's accreditation, placing platforms will be required to adopt these standards and in doing so, they will then provide the trusted source of reliable data, which is foundational to all other parts of the customer journey and will supplement face-to-face -face trading. The placement processing data, which will be created at the point of bind, will form the core data record and will be the single point of reference which connects all subsequent processes, including accounting, payment, endorsements, claims, renewals and reporting. This will be the thing that will be truly transformational, enabling our market to become a digital marketplace. In order to gain accreditation and therefore access to all of those digital processes, third-party placement solutions must meet our data standards. Of course, PPL will be one of the core placing platforms available. It's the most widely used across the market, supporting a significant increase in the number of electronic transactions that have taken place during the COVID-19 lockdown, which Sue Jakobek, PPL CEO, will talk about a little later. Lloyd's investment in PPL will accelerate the delivery of a new platform with significant enhancements that the market will see in 2021 and further through into 2022, guaranteeing it will meet those accreditation standards and is seamlessly integrated into our new digital placing process. For delegated authority placement, the same principles apply with risk placement standards and the core data record supported by a Lloyd's own platform, which will simplify the cover holder onboarding process and enable facility placement from H1 2021, provide Lloyd's cover holders with a risk placement and policy administration system or integrate with their own, validate, record and distribute consistent and reliable risk paid premium and claims data and finally, simplify the cover holder order process. Although our main focus is open market and delegated authority business, we're also looking at how we can improve inward treaty reinsurance placement, which is currently placed manually face-to-face -face or on bespoke systems. There's a real opportunity for us to work with the reinsurance brokers and markets to support these platforms or even help build a data-first platform. In Blueprint 1, we also talked about a risk exchange, recognising the acceleration of artificial intelligence and algorithm use to automate underwriting and placement. This type of business is getting more traction, and we still believe there's a significant opportunity for Lloyds to support this, but by providing connectivity from multiple markets to multiple retail brokers and wholesalers through an exchange of exchanges capability. So over the next year, we'll be undertaking consultation, more research and some experiments to determine the right way forward to support both inward treaty and automated placement. And I look forward to telling you more about that in 2021. To support digital placement, we'll offer a suite of integrated and seamless new placement support services covering compliance checking, tax calculation, validation services, and the creation of a truly unique reference for each contract and section, and which can be used as a reference for the London companies market where the placement is dual market. These new services will be additional to existing placement support services like the virtual room. The next step then in our journey is our digital gateway, which is the interface between the electronic placement platforms and digital processing. 
This will support complete and accurate data records, enabling fast digital processing. That means frictionless automated accounting, payment endorsements and reporting, which takes seconds rather than months or weeks. All of the processing you see in the infographic will be supported by the data store. That's the central repository for the market. It will securely house the core data record, including the intelligent market reform contract, which will be updated to enable the creation of a structured placement processing data record. The data store will also include endorsements, renewals and claims records over the life cycle of a contract and it will be developed to support the whole London market. The entire customer journey from getting covered to recovering from loss will be underpinned by a digital spine, a modern, flexible technology architecture that focuses on data orchestration, integration, creating a uni unified experience for the participants of the market. The digital spine will enable the flow of data between Lloyd's and the wider market it will eliminate the duplication caused by manual data processes and make it easier to automate. It will improve operational reliability, resilience and flexibility and it will support innovation so we can improve existing market services and we can create new ones. For those customers we need to help to recover from a loss. We will digitize the claims process based on the same design principles we've applied to getting covered. So that starts with an electronic first notification of loss that's then routed through the digital gateway and immediately linked to the policy records in the data store using that unique reference. That information can then be enriched with additional data, for example, satellite imagery, and used by the new claims orchestration platform that we'll also develop. Shield Sawney of BRIT and the executive market sponsor for claims in the future at Lloyd's will talk to you in depth about the claims solutions of the future shortly. You'll also, of course, find lots of detail on how we'll be integrating electronic first notification of loss and routing, claims orchestration and claim support services, delegated authority claims, and legacy processing as it exists now to provide a seamless integrated journey for you and for your customers, all in Blueprint 2, of course. The plans we publish today, and we will execute over the next two years, will deliver policy creation in minutes and significantly faster claims payments for customers, all underpinned by right first-time data and supported by the Lloyd's digital gateway and digital spying. This program of transformation will truly revolutionise Lloyd's as we work to build that most advanced insurance marketplace in the world. Importantly, all of the proposals you'll see set out in Blueprint 2 have been designed for you, recognising that your firm forms part of the wider London insurance market, often as part of larger insurance groups. The proposals we've published today have been designed to be available and attractive for use by the wider London insurance market. We see that as essential to avoid separation of processes, duplication and additional cost. Your adoption of the solutions that we're building will be critical. We know that brokers and insurers don't want to have to use multiple processes and systems and so we'll continue to engage with you and with all of our stakeholders in the consultation, research and development work as we deliver the plans we've set out in Blueprint 2. Blueprint 2 is clear in the scale of its ambition, data, connectivity and end-to-end -end solutions that integrate are at the heart of Blueprint 2. But beyond that, how is the future at Lloyd's different in its execution? So the approach is as important as our delivery in terms of a successful execution of our plan. As we quickly move to building and delivering on the solutions we've set out in Blueprint 2, we'll be doing so <coughs> excuse me, by taking a research-driven and iterative approach, underpinned by market engagement and research. We'll learn and we'll innovate through experimentation powered by multidisciplinary teams with market participants from across the whole market as part of those teams. Our solutions will be designed with you to work for you. And we're building a modern, open and flexible technology architecture to ensure we can test and iterate at speed and crucially integrate effectively to ease adoption. This approach has already helped us bring our delivery plans into sharper focus 
to provide quick solutions to priority problems and refine emerging solutions with the market like the virtual room. Finally, building the most advanced insurance marketplace in the world will require new skills as well as new ways of working to be successful. Our collaborative approach will be based on making the most of the world-renowned talent that we have in the market, as well as bringing in new talent and skills to support our digital ecosystem. Our approach will be people-centric, open, inclusive and transparent. We are building the future culture of the market, as well as the future systems and processes. There's no doubt we have a very busy two years ahead, but all of the work and the change that we have before us will be well and truly worth it. The plans that we set out in Blueprint 2 will deliver revolutionary change for the market, ensuring the future of the Lloyds market is digital from start to finish with data at its core. It's been an incredible journey so far, and I'm excited to bring these solutions to life over the next two years in partnership with you. And in that spirit of partnership, I'd like to now hand over to Sue to talk to us about the next generation of PPL and how that fits with the future at Lloyd's. Thanks very much, Jen, and uh, good morning to everybody. I'm delighted to be here this morning to talk about the next generation of PPL and how it fits with the Blueprint 2. The good news is that PPL is starting from a strong position. Lockdown and remote working has supercharged adoption and usage. All the data shows a robust upward trend, and last June saw record-breaking levels of activity, with 8,000 risks placed, almost three times higher than the week the market went into lockdown. Even more importantly, the experience is proven to be positive, with brokers commenting on the good response times from underwriters, and more brokers starting the process from quote. So events have proved that the market can switch to new ways of working, and of course, we all recognize the value of face-to-face -face trading, but it's also shown us where time can be spent in automating the processes, leaving more time for the value add. PPL has three key advantages. It has the largest number of registered users. It has the greatest volume of business, and it caters for more key business variations and scenarios than any other system. This is a strong foundation, but we know that customers don't love it. It's worth remembering that the existing platform was an adaptation of something that already existed. That was the market's choice at the time. But this time, we're starting with a blank sheet of paper and 100% focus on how the market wants the platform to perform. The next generation of PPL puts the user first. All the work we've done so far has been to hear what users want and need, where the pain points are, and how we can make that better. 90 market experts from 32 companies are actively engaged in the design and build of the new platform. And the aim is to make electronic placement as intuitive for users as face-to-face -face trading. You asked us for better support throughout the negotiation process. So we're building document collaboration tools, online chat, video, etc., into the platform. You asked us for more flexibility to work the way you want to work. So we've redesigned the create placement structure so that the contract naturally evolves through the negotiation. And we've included a simple way to manage renewals and navigate a client's policy history. We had a private view for market CEOs yesterday on how the new platform is developing and had a really positive response. Our focus on making this all about the user and their experience was warmly welcomed. So I've talked about the user experience, but there are benefits from a company perspective too. From a management point of view, you get quality real-time data, a platform that evolves swiftly to meet your changing needs at pace and without burdensome cost. And you'll also get insights and intelligence. Users and firms will have the data to make more efficient and informed placements and get downstream analytics. The new platform moves the market significantly towards a data-first approach, but in a controlled way. Document plus data is a transitional step. It's actually far more complex than just document or just data. But it's important that we can do this transition because the market's not yet ready to go all the way. 
The work we're doing is completely aligned with the ambitions of future at Lloyd's, and we're working closely with them and all the market associations to deliver on the ambitions in Blueprint 2. Data is an important part of what we're doing with the new PPL, and obviously Blueprint 2 focuses a lot on data standards and the movement of data through the value chain. Placing is the start of the end-to-end -end journey, and good quality data at Bind enables greater automation of middle and back office processes and claims. This removes rework and unnecessary cost. We will extract some details from the MRC through a digitization process using AI and machine learning techniques, which, when combined with other information, can feed directly into those processes. Either document or data can be updated, but they're always kept in sync and must be so to preserve the integrity of the process. That data will be readily available to firms through standardized interfaces known as APIs in a form that can be easily consumed by your in-house systems. Establishing this flow of information is a key goal for PPL, and it's much easier to all speak the same language. This is why we need common standards. We'll work to embed the placing data standards and rules approved by Lloyd's so that using the new platform will unlock all the benefits of digital placement processing. As Jen said, our timeline for delivery is the summer of 2021, but our process of working with market firms will start a long time before delivering. To ensure that we're building what you want and need, but also allow time for integration and training, etc., we need to start those conversations before Christmas. We've been working with the market for some time now on development and design, and we'll continue to do that throughout the implementation process. In the new year, we have a number of engagement activities planned to help firms get ready for the new platform. These include show and tell sessions, group forums, town halls, as well as training. We'll also provide support to each firm individually. If anyone would like to get ahead of the curve, we're happy to start those conversations now. So do please get in touch with me. From all of us on the PPR team, I just wanted to thank the huge number of market practitioners who've helped to make the current platform such a vital utility for the London market. And thank you all for the support we've had through this year, which has undoubtedly been a tough one for everyone. And finally, for your input and engagement in taking PPL forward so that we can make electronic placement as intuitive as face-to-face. -face. Thank you, and I'd like now to hand over to Shield to talk about claims. Thank you, Sue, um, and thank you, everyone, everyone. I'm excited to be speaking to you today about the future of claims for our market, and what's more, your claims community, who I'm representing, are equally as excited about the opportunities that presents itself, the opportunities that presents itself under the future of Lloyd's. Uh, let me say from the outset, it's been great. The level of engagement and representation from all levels, from all different parties in the market, both here in London and in other parts of the world, we've had heads of claims, heads of underwriting, claims experts, senior claims brokers, Lloyd's, obviously, the LMA, uh, even people who run uh, and own uh, some of our delegated claim services uh, have contributed to date. And when you have a wide variety of stakeholders involved in the oversight, the planning, giving advice, and, and actually in the working groups, even actually in the working groups, you feel more and more confident that you're headed in the right direction. And that's a direction that we believe will deliver speed, efficiency, and better outcomes for our customers. And that's important. And what you'll read in Blueprint 2 is something I believe in. And that is the claims is the moment of truth for our policyholder. When someone makes a claim, they're essentially saying, help me, I'm in trouble. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's our responsibility at that very moment. It's our chance to make our customers whole again, protect them, defend them, get them back uh, to business or life as usual. So what's our vision? Our vision for the future of claims is to make claim service delivery, whether it's a standard claim, a complex claim, a delegated claim, as seamless and efficient as possible so we can deliver on that process. And similar and consistent with the fundamental principle of the journey to obtain coverage, the future of claims will be supported by a fully digital, data-driven claims ecosystem using tech solutions that will benefit all claims teams. That's here in the London market and beyond. So put simply, we're going to fix the process. 
We're going to fix the technology. We're going to remove all the friction points so we can get back to doing what we do best, which is settle and close claims for our customers better, faster, and easier. So our goals under the uh, claims lab at the future of Lloyd's um, are pretty straightforward. We want to deliver a better claims experience, reducing the time it takes to agree and pay claims. We want to increase market transparency and collaboration. And by that, I mean brokers, claim specialists, adjusters, investigators, everyone involved in advancing a claim. We want to reduce LAE and the cost of business, doing business at Lloyd's. I believe if we get rid of the process pain points and data challenges, we should, should save time and money. Um, if, you read, um, if you read Dowling, uh, he just published again his view on LAE for commercial lines. It's at 12 points versus underwriting profit at four points. And that to me just doesn't make any sense. I think there's a great opportunity there. And we want to make it easier to do business with Lloyd's. And I believe that should attract talent, tomorrow's talent, and the world's best market specialists. And, you know, don't forget, we handle some of the most challenging and intellectually stimulating cases in the world, and that's appealing to people. And most importantly, and we can't lose sight of this, the overall mission is to increase retention rates on our gross rate and premium. If we deliver on everything that I've described, described, we should be able to attract and retain customers. And as Sue said and Jen said, it all starts with data. And I'm excited about the opportunity to have clean data held in the core data record. That gives us the ability to match claims instantly to the right policy, start auto check, start validation, and that can commence within seconds of receiving the first notice of loss. And that gives us, and that gives us an immediate advantage with speed and accuracy. We can't afford to wrestle through data challenges and rekeying in the future. That doesn't make sense. In the future, claims data will automatically be enriched with claims information from various third-party sources. That streamlined, high-quality first notice of loss opens the door to auto-triaging from the outset. So in the future, we will deploy an intelligent routing engine, which will direct a claim to its appropriate handling channel based on its complexity. And that means as a market, we can instantly move fast track claims to a mostly touchless workflow. And we've developed a proof of concept that proves that out, where we can save time and settle claims quicker. And conversely, we can route complex claims directly to the right specialists into our new claims platform, which will replace ECF. In Blueprint 2, we highlight that we will introduce a new orchestration platform ultimately replacing ECF in class. And in that regard, collaboration and orchestration are key. Claims orchestration, automation, and collaboration will be available to, to all London market carriers, directly or through APIs. And we're encouraged that we're going to start by building on our current market concepts and data standards, that's Accord and Right Back, and we're also really encouraged by the opportunity to leverage the digital spine. And that's highlighted in Blueprint 2. When you get a chance to read that, you'll see that the digital spine for claims will be our data and processing orchestration layer. So with the new claims platform, a modern infrastructure, the digital spine will then have the ability to connect to additional support tools and services. And what does that do for us? It gives us the ability to make better data-driven decisions faster and at lower adjusting costs. Practically speaking, that means we can use satellite and geospatial to adjust claims anywhere in the world from right here in London. We can auto-assign claims based on the incoming data and the data enhancement directly to global experts. We can leverage event notification, direct data capture, and ultimately eliminate fewer eliminate handoffs. So I believe how we adjust claims in the future, whether it's satellite, geospatial, using AI, any other innovations, it gives us a golden opportunity to simultaneously reduce cycle, reduce cycle times, and that's important for our customers, and reduce LAE for us. And that's a win-win. And when it comes to delegated authority, we're going to replicate these principles. And I'm really excited about the progress we've made here in 2020. Uh, we've mapped out the future for what we need to do in delegated claims. We've com completed a process design review, and the findings are actually quite compelling. And the best part, again, was the cross-market collaboration from all stakeholders in the design thinking sessions. So in that regard on de delegated, we have a real opportunity to hit the ground running in 2021 on the way to building a completely reimagined claims 
delegated experience, data experience. And what does that include? Upfront data capture and validation for Bordero. I mean, that's a major issue for us. We've got to get the data coming in right, and that's to get the data coming in right. And that's consistent with what everyone else has said. A faster payment solution, increase transparency, reduce the friction points, reduce delays, and reduce effort due to manual correction. Finally, let's remove all the no-value steps in the process. And this has all been sort of mapped out for the claims lab. To, and this has all been sort of mapped out. So the future of delegated claims will be fully digitized. We'll have ultimately no flat files, no issues of it getting stuck in the pipeline, and we want direct access to payment solutions so customers can receive their claim payments in minutes. And I know that's an ambitious statement, but I'm very confident we will get there very soon. So in closing, I'd also like to say how impressed I am with how the claims community has continued to contribute on the future of Lloyd's during a very challenging year. We've had COVID. We're in the middle of a very active cat season. Um, I'm, I'd like to thank them and, again, say how impressed I am that they've continued to dedicate time and effort to this opportunity. So with that, I say thank you, and I will pass it over to Clyde Buesler. Thank you, Sheil. Um, first of all, I'd like to say again how privileged I feel I've been involved in, in the creation and helping creation of Blueprint 2, not from Lloyd's perspective, but now leading a London broker. Um, this, I believe, is truly transformational in terms of what, what it lays out, and that's got to be great for our market and our customers and, and, and thriving into the future. And I'm going to talk about digital processing today, which really is, is at the end of the um, getting covered and recovering from lost um, user journeys. But in order to do that, you can't start with digital processing. This fundamental concept of digital processing it has to start up front. Simply put, the future digital marketplace is based on a complete and accurate data source from electronic placing and claims platforms forming the irrefutable, and I'll come back to that later, record for the market. This will enable digital processing, achieving processing in steps, processing steps in seconds. People use minutes, I'll, I'll use seconds for a moment, that used to take weeks or months. That's a big statement, but I really believe that. And when we get into how that works, I think you'll, you'll see that coming through. So following on and building from what Jen and Sue have said, the new digital processing journey, it all starts at placement. Get placement right, and you'll get the downstream processes right. It's as simple as that. And like in any digital journey, it's about getting that data up front and enabling those downstream processes. So as if data is at the heart of Blueprint 2, the keystone to digitizing the market is the core data record. And the core data record starts its life on the placing platforms by creating that placing processing data at the point of bind. This is the absolute minimum data required. We've worked hard to make sure that is. And in a modern world, we've all seen this in, in, in systems that we use today, you don't need to ask people to enter everything because you can look things up, you can calculate things, you can derive things, you can, you, can, you can enrich things, you can derive things. So we said, what is the absolute minimum we need to collect at the point in bind to enable those downstream processes? And it's not about collecting exposure data and pricing data. It's not about submission and quote. It's about what we need at that point in bind to create the accounting record, enable payment, provide the data for regulatory and financial reporting. But in order to do that, what have we got to do? What have we got to do as part of that place and process to get it right? The first thing starts with the intelligent MRC. And as Sue alluded to, in a data first world, it's relatively easy. We all understand how you collect data items and elements and how they can lead to processing. In a document world, it's obviously rather more complicated. We've, we're, we've been through that. We understand that. So in this document plus data world, the concept of the intelligent MRC is making sure we can keep that core data record in sync with the document at all time. So we have one version of what those data fields are and embedded as part of that. And that's the, that's the intelligent MRC. How that's, in, how that's ultimately implemented in the third-party plating platforms will be, up, will be up to those vendors. What we're going to say in the future of Lloyd's documents, we expect that data to be of a certain standard and be available at the point of bind. Importantly in doing that, the placement support services, we've talked briefly about this, but this really is saying in order to get that data right and to create a highly intuitive and compelling user experience, there's no good imposing all these um, things saying we need to collect all this data and yet it's too difficult to use. Sue's already referred to the fact that we have to create platforms that people want to use, not have to use. So the importance of that comes through as well in those placing support services. Things like virtual room, things like having look up access to crystal reports, having tax calculators that are available during the, the, the placing process, look up things like that, checking your data right before you submit it. And ultimately, having a genuinely unique market reference that when you about to hit the bind button, 
it looks up on a, on a service and says, here's my genuine unique, unique reference that's assigned across any platform, and that remains unique for the life cycle of the risk. Also, we're talking about placement rules. We know that, for example, signing down is a really useful and compelling capability in a lot of circumstances, particularly from the broker point of view. It also creates a lot of processing complexity. So we're saying let's impose some rules that work to say, let's not always have signing down as the default. Let's, let's talk about rules that we can use and you can override, et cetera, but just create um, simplicity and transparency in the process. So there'll be some rules involved in that as well. But all of those come together, again, and emphasizing it must be wrapped up in that highly intuitive and compelling user experience. So that's about getting placing right. We get placing right, and we'll get digital processing right. So once we come out those placing platforms at the point of bind, the data is created, it goes straight through, straight through to the digital gateway. Once in the gateway, the gateway does some simple things. It says, is that, have I got the minimum record? Yes, if so, I can enrich it. Then I can route it to digital processing. I'm also going to store a copy in the data store, and I'm also going to report what's coming through that, that um, digital gateway. I think this is really important because what we need is that transparency to say, what has happened during placing? Is it, has, it, has it created that complete and accurate record? If so, it goes into digital processing. If not, and I'll come back to this later, it'll go into legacy processing. And over time, clearly, we need to migrate more and more coming into digital processing. We'll be reporting on that by market, by broker, by carrier, and what's been successful getting through to digital processing. But as soon as it comes into digital processing, and as soon as it comes in, then we can create the ledger positions immediately. This is effectively the invoice. It's very important to say at this point, it will only work to create those ledger positions if everyone trusts that that data is complete and accurate, because that will be the trusted source for the market. So this will then form the basis for fast invoicing and payments with trusted placement claims data held centrally. Automated accounting payments will be possible for the market, avoiding significant rework, reconciliation of errors, and acceleration of downstream processes. The new technical account invoice message, including the tax calculated, is then immediately sent to the brokers and the carriers who can ingest this into their systems. So all parties need to accept that is the irrefutable data, because what we don't want is then that data created and then say, well, I've got to reconcile it because it's not necessarily right. All that will then result is then moving the reconciliation point, which currently happens in DXC, back to example for the brokers. So we don't want that. We have to trust that data use it once across the market and get rid of all that reconciliation. Fundamentally, this means we will not need to create LPANs. That parallel process that happens often, you know, days or weeks after the actual agreement of the MRC, we don't need that process. This, the, the accounting record is created from that bind data through the digital gateway. We will maintain net settlement. Net settlement works well when it's fed by an accurate technical account. So by doing this, we're going to have that accuracy and that speed in the technical accounting record that we can then use net settlement and use the instructions to pay to drive net settlement. However, we've listened a lot, listened and we know that creating invoicing and direct settlement is also important. So we'll be experimenting, lawyers, with that creating of invoicing and direct settlement using that core data record. For delegated authority, the journey is the same. So imagine that world where data submitted into, into DDM is in line with Lloyd's standards. We no longer need to submit further settlement transactions. These will be used to create those ledger entries. Initially, we expect data to be submitted on a border basis with corresponding ledger entries and settlements happening on a monthly basis. But again, let's move forward to a world where those can be submitted more on a real-time basis. This will significantly improve cash flow and ultimately re remove the need for lost funds. Coming back to, so that's a, a very clean path to that. And I think you can all see at that point of bind, and we see it in all systems that we use in our daily life, in banking systems, et cetera. If you get that data immediately afterwards, things happen. The immediately after here is we create, we create that technical account in the digital gateway. But if transactions don't pass into that digital gateway to immediately create that record, then it will be rooted into legacy processing. It would have to be tran transacted in a, tr in a traditional way. Clearly, over time, we want to move, move quickly away from legacy into, into the digital gateways. All, not all, but most things get processed through that. We do recognize a world, of course, where there will be some things that are just too complicated, certainly in the early months and years, to process in that way. You know, often people quote me this example of how on earth do you work out the tax of a race source on a boat traveling to Australia in, in a digital world? Well, there will be things that, so some of that 
legacy will transition to expert processing, where truly we need to analyze things very in a very detailed and expert way in order to determine that. But the vast majority, we believe, will be able to go through that digital processing gateway. Finally, following on from Sheila on claims, it's the same story there. You know, we hear stories of claims being approved and then taking several days or even weeks for the payment to happen. The key thing here about digital processing is if you've collected that record through the placement cycle, it's stored in the data store, all the settlement details will be available instantly. So the idea then of settling the claim and having instant settlement is a reality because you've created that data record and that data record stays with the risk right through the life cycle in the data store. So the primary aim of digital processing is to enable frictionless automated accounting, payment, endorsement and reporting the moment the placing data has been validated. This really will be a massive contributor to creating the most advanced marketplace in the world. Some of the key benefits as I see them, you know, transactions will be processed much faster with greater transparency at lower cost, supporting a better experience for all, especially customers. Accounts will be rapid, accurate and consistent between all parties, as long as we all accept that that is the trusted record. Manual LPAN, central, central submission supporting schedules will be eliminated for those moving on to new digital services. Insurance invoicing will be accelerated with more, transparent, with more transparency and cash management will be improved. I think the most important thing is all the efforts that go into parallel processes, reconciliation, error corrections, rework will be largely eliminated. So in the world we're moving into, we get the data right, we get the user experience right, and we can generally see that digital marketplace, which has got to be, which is going to be fantastic for us in the future, good for our customers, and will allow us to thrive. That's why I get really excited about it. I'm now going to hand over to John. I think he's going to follow up with some closing comments. So um, thank you to Bruce, thank you to Jen, and especially thank you there to Sue, Shield, and Clive for really bringing the ambition and the very clear intent of Blueprint 2 to life. It's without doubt a challenging two-year program, but the reward and the change for the better is far too significant to ignore. The solutions we've talked about today will totally transform the way in which our market operates. We'll become a truly digital marketplace powered by data and technology. We'll create intuitive, straight-through processes for the placing and binding of risk, we'll be able to identify a valid claim on notification and track it throughout the rest of the claim lifecycle, and we'll do all that with a right first-time mentality. So what does this translate to? Well, we'll be better connected, we'll be so much faster in everything we do, and we'll be able to take significant frictional cost out of our processes. These things will ultimately deliver much better value for our customers, and that can only be a good thing. I've been saying for some time that Blueprint 2 is our rubber hits the road moment. This is the time, arguably, where the hard work really starts, but also where great progress can and will be made. Blueprint 2 is quite simply revolutionary, and I'm really excited to be working with the team and the market to create a better marketplace for all of us. We've not made it easy for ourselves. In order to progress and build the market we all want to be a part of in the future, we've got to be ambitious. So put simply, we are redesigning the entire insurance life cycle, something that's not been attempted at Lloyd's for a very long time. That's why we need your ongoing support and input because we cannot achieve this on our own. And it's going to take the whole market to support us if we are to succeed. The delivery of Blueprint 2 is based on three critical success factors. The first is that data standards are created, met, and used uniformly in the dual process of getting covered and recovering from loss. The second is that the new technologies described in Blueprint 2 and those data standards are universally adopted by all of the market participants. And third, sandwiched between data standards and adoption is our job within the corporation, which is to deliver this program seamlessly and efficiently. The corporation does sit at the heart 
and the centre of the execution. And so my commitment to all of you is that we will deliver this in the manner and in the time we've described. I am confident we will do just that. What we need from you is a commitment in return to uphold those data standards, to adopt new ways of working, to be advocates of the change both in the local market here in London and around the world because adoption is absolutely vital to achieving our ambition and it requires everybody to play their part. We will be working in partnership with all of you and through the final quarter of this year we'll continue to engage with you to articulate the detail of what's described in the Blueprint 2 document and to ensure that we can build clarity with you around the technology and operational requirements for market participants. And we will continue to update you on the progress as we engage with broader stakeholders in the delivery of Blueprint 2. The beauty of the Lloyds market is that we have collective strength in numbers. That's our opportunity to deliver something extraordinary and to future-proof our market for the better and for the long term. I'm a firm believer in life that a lot is about timing. It's just not about whether you're good, better or best, because if the timing's against you, then you still might not succeed. I feel the timing is absolutely right to create the world's most advanced insurance marketplace today. We started out on our journey on this through Blueprint One, and it's now about maintaining this momentum and really delivering on the execution, whether that's through increased investment in transformation or the development of technology platforms or the adoption or the standards we've been talking to you about today. Blueprint 2 is now ready for download and I very much encourage you to read it and to give us your views. There's plenty of opportunity for you and your organizations to aid the delivery of our plans and for your people to develop from their involvement in the program. We've already achieved a lot through the future of Lloyds and it's crucial that we continue to engage in conversations to ensure we can deliver the technology solutions that will drive benefits for all of us. There are a number of ways you can get involved from signing up to our market research panel and market engagement sessions to participating in our online forums and engaging with our future at Lloyds hub. It goes without saying that Blueprint 2 has been a tremendous collaboration between so many people within the corporation, the market, the market associations, and even stakeholders further afield. Your responses have been overwhelmingly positive and have enabled us to develop the solutions that we're putting forward to you today. With that in mind, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has contributed and helped so far. From everyone at the Future at Lloyd's team, led by Jen Rigby, to our advisory groups and to every contributor across the market and beyond. Despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, it's been an incredible effort to get to where we are. And today is a testament to the commitment and collaboration that has always been at the heart of our marketplace. So here's to delivering the next phase of our journey and establishing the world's most advanced insurance marketplace. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or feedback, please direct it to the Future at Lloyd's team via the website or email futureatlloyds.com. Thank you for your continued support. I assure you we do not take it for granted. We will continue to earn it, but we will need this support to succeed. <laughs>